lesson, I'll be teaching on another interesting topic in chemistry, which is called isotopy and the relative atomic mass calculations. Now, in the course of today's lesson, I'll be teaching on the explanations on isotopy before I move over to the calculations on this topic. Now, what's isotopy? Isotopy is the phenomenon whereby atoms of the same element have different mass numbers but the same atomic number. Now, this is what I mean. For example, you are giving chlorine atom. Chlorine has two isotopes, chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. Now, you can see here that the mass number of these two isotopes are different. That's isotopy. But the atomic number of these two isotopes are the same. That's isotopy. Now, take note. Since the atomic number are the same, it means that these two isotopes share the same chemical properties because the atomic number is also called the proton number. And for a neutral atom, since the proton number is 17, the electron number becomes 17. An electron number defines the chemical properties of an element. Now, isotopy was discovered by a man called Frederick Sodi. In the year 1912, but a man called Francis Anston, Francis Anston, okay, in the year 1913, we discovered isotopy. Now, the word isotope was coined by a woman called Margaret Toad. Margaret Toad. Margaret Toad coined the word isotopy. Now, it should be noted that in chemistry, we have over 350 isotopes. Where 50 are the stable ones. Okay, now isotope can be stable and unstable. The unstable isotopes are usually radioactive in nature. Okay, now please take note that a man called Dr. Glenn Seaborg, Dr. Glenn Seaborg, Dr. Glenn Seaborg. discovered elements from 94 that's the atomic number 94 to 102 elements in the periodic table and same man called Dr. Glenn Seaborg and his colleagues discovered over 100 isotopes okay now with this are the explanation on isotopy. Now let's go over to the calculations based on isotopy. Now let's use boron as an example. Now boron has two main isotopes which is the boron 10 and boron 11. Now let's say boron 10 has a percent abundance to be 19 percent and boron 11 has the percent abundance to be 81 percent. Now with this, we can solve the relative atomic mass of any isotope, but we need to know the equation to be used. Now, the relative atomic mass equals the percent abundance of the first isotope, that the percent abundance of this boron 10 times the mass of the first isotope. Now, the mass is talking about the mass number of boron 10, that is this mass number over 
100 plus the percent abundance of the second isotope, that's 81 percent, times the mass of the second isotope, that's 11 over 100. Now let's impute our parameters. Now the RAM becomes the percent abundance, which is 19, times the mass of the first isotope, which is 10, over 100, plus the percent abundance of the second isotope, which is 81, times the mass of the second isotope, which is 11, over 100. Now the percent, now the RAM, that's the relative atomic mass of the boron isotope becomes now 0 cancel 0. Now 19 over 10 becomes 1.9 plus 1 press the calculator get 8.91. Now the RAM becomes 10.81. So 10.81 is the relative atomic mass of the boron isotope. Now it should be noted that the percent abundance is also called the geometric abundance or you call it the natural abundance. Now let's quickly go over to question 2. Now question 2 will be dealing with the isotope of oxygen. Now oxygen has two isotopes that's oxygen 16 as the mass number with atomic number 8 and oxygen 18 with atomic number 8 still. Now, the percent abundance of the first isotope of oxygen is given to be 90% and the percent abundance of the second isotope of oxygen is given to be 10%. Now, let's calculate the relative atomic mass of oxygen. Now, using this formula, we can get the relative atomic mass of oxygen. Now let's impute our parameters. Now the percent abundance of the first isotope is given to be 90% times the mass of the first isotope. I told you that the mass of the isotope is the mass number. Okay? Is the mass number. Now the mass is given to be 16 over 100 plus the percent abundance of the second isotope which is 10 times the mass of the second isotope which is 18 over 100. Now the RAM becomes, when we hit the calculator we get 14.4 plus 1.8. Okay, now the RAM of oxygen, that is the relative atomic mass of oxygen, becomes 16.2. So 16.2 is the relative atomic mass of oxygen. Now it should be noted that the relative atomic mass of all elements are not all numbers. Now let's go over to the last question. In this question, we are not going to be asked to get the relative atomic mass of the isotope, but rather will be asked to get the percent abundance of each of the isotope. Now the isotope we are going to be using will be the isotope of chlorine. Now chlorine has two main isotopes. Chlorine has two main isotopes, that's chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. Now the relative atomic mass of chlorine is 35.5. Now with this information, we can go ahead and get the percent abundance of each of the isotopes. Now the relative atomic mass is given to be 35.5. So write 35.5 equals the percent abundance of the first isotope, which we are asked to do for. So we'll make it x times the mass of the first isotope which is 35 so we say 35 over 100 
plus the percent abundance of the second highest total. Now note, percentage equals 100. So it means that the percent abundance of the second highest total will be 100 minus the percent abundance of the first highest total. So it will be 100 minus x times the mass of the second highest total, which is 37 over 100. Now let's start with the mathematics. So 35.5 equals 35 times x, that's 35x over 100 plus 100 times 37, that's 3700 minus x times 37, that's minus 37x over 100. Now the next step is to take LCM, okay? Now it will now be 35.5 equals 35x plus 3,700 minus 37x over 100. When we do the LCM, we get this. Now the next step is to cross multiply. So it becomes 3550, that's 35.5 times 100, equals 35x plus 3700 minus 37x. Okay, now after getting this, we collect like terms. So let's collect like terms. Now, it will not be 3550 equals. 35x minus 37x, that's minus 2x plus 3700. Now, when we get to this, we make minus 2x subject. So when we make this subject, it becomes plus. So it will now be 2x equals 3700 minus 3550. Now, after doing this, we get 2x equals 3700 minus 3500, we get 150. Okay? Now, making x subject, we get x equals 150 over 2. Okay? So, x becomes 75%. Now, this is the percent abundance of the first isotope. Now, let's get the percent abundance of the second isotope. And recall, the percent abundance of the second isotope will be 100 minus the percent abundance of the first isotope. So the percent abundance of chlorine 37 will be equals to 100 minus x. And what is x? 75. So it becomes CL 37, 17 equals 100 minus 75. So the percent abundance will be 37 equal to 100 minus 75, that's 25 percent. So 25 percent is the percent abundance of the second isotope. Now you can see that the percent abundance of the first isotope is more. So it means that chlorine 35 is more abundant. 